Mm. One of the reasons why I sit with people so long initially. is a reflection of my uh, value for sitting and resting in silence and stillness and presence. In essence, there's a lot of techniques and practices that we can do in the path of awakening. But when we gather like this in satsang, on some level, the real practice is just to tune into the presence and allow it to take us home. And if the mind asks the question, what is home? Where am I going? What are we looking for? A pointer like awareness. and presence this is a good place to start. We could say that who and what we are, our true nature is awareness presence. That's the quality of the essence of reality as such. Awareness, we could say, is mm, the experience and the recognition that we have when we're in the transcendent dimension. And presence is where that same recognition penetrates into the mind-body and registers in the energy system, and we feel it. And that's why I like those two pointers, awareness and presence, or awareness-presence. Awareness itself is linked in with the practice of self-inquiry. And when we gather like this to recognize our true nature, to wake up, to recognize what is, to realize the truth, it's always important to remember that it's the truth of what we are. It's the truth of identity. And because reality as such is non-dual, your identity is my identity. There's only one identity, and that identity or that self we could call awareness, we could call presence. But awareness, so we hear the word awareness, but what's the experience of awareness? Well, it's very simple, simpler than the mind can understand, but awareness is what's watching our experience, what's witnessing, and it's uncaused. Underneath all experience is awareness. It's the foundation. And so the practice of self-inquiry is to recognize this awareness through the practice of negation. And that's why self-inquiry and, and the paths of negation work, because awareness, or who and what we are, our ultimate nature, can't be negated. <clears throat> it's what's watching, witnessing, awareing, spontaneously uncaused. And we can directly tune into that and recognize that through recognizing the quality of awareness or space, emptiness, feeling it in the body, in the energy system as presence, and recognizing the unbounded nature of that. But if that's too simple, then we can have this practice of negation, of self-inquiry, of backing up from thoughts, and most emotions, sensations, and recognizing there's something witnessing always, something aware always. Thoughts arise, and they fall away. Emotions arise, and they fall away. All experience comes and goes. It's temporary. But in the stillness, 
in the quietude of the mind and the experience, there's something there. What it is, we can't grasp. It's formless. But it's what we are. That's the foundation. We could say that that sense of I or I amness is what is, is awareness, is the self with the capital S, is presence, is silence, is stillness. And out of that, everything arises and falls back into that, dissolves back into that. So if we can recognize that sense of space, that sense of witnessing, that sense of the witness itself as being an identity, an identity shift out of the mind and the body into the space of awareness, into the space, into pure consciousness, the witnessing, the awareing. If we can recognize that, then we can see that we are that and we can say I am awareness, I am that and we can recognize I am not the mind I am not the world of the senses when what I thought I was is a concept but the alive reality of what I am is this space is this consciousness, is this awareness and it's felt as a sense of presence And we could say that's the foundational first step of awakening. And we can glimpse that and we can know that and there can be a sense of falling back asleep. And we can rest and maybe meditate or walk in nature and recognize that again. And we can go back to sleep and we're back in the mind. And it's not so much that the mind needs to stop spinning or thinking, it's more that the identity or, or our sense of self falls back into the mind. But we can remember again. We fall back into that simplicity. But then eventually that awake awareness reveals its deeper dimension of unity, of oneness, with the world, with form, And that's where the teaching, emptiness is form, form is emptiness, is revealed. It's in that seeing, in that knowing, in that recognizing who and what we are as awareness, as consciousness, being superfluidly connected with the world of form. And it's a relaxed seeing that recognition can come to us very strongly and very dynamically, very powerfully, and we can see it and we can feel it and it can be unmistakable. There can be a sense of just energy pouring through the system and we can feel that connection of oneness so strongly. That can happen, but mm, it doesn't have to. It can be much simpler than that. It can just be a relaxed opening and recognizing that whatever we're looking at, it's same. It doesn't make sense to the mind, but when we intuitively tune into that, we can see same as awareness, as that space. When we look, where is the distinction between that space and form? Is there a distinction? There can be a recognition that there's pure consciousness or pure awareness. And then there's objects. So that distinction can be there. But underneath that, is there actually a separation? Is that sense of presence separated by the form?
And that's where the recognition of non-duality of oneness is revealed in that seeing, in that seeing. I often talk about embodiment and awakening of the head, the heart, the gut. And the pure experience of awakened mind or the awakening of the head would be that experience of transcendence. So it's the witness that's watching. The pure consciousness, the pure awareness, and the recognition that we are that as being separate from the world and from form. The awakened heart perception is the perception of oneness in unity. It's where that distinction falls away. We wake out of the mind-body into awareness, into presence. But there still can be a subtle sense of separation between the witness and the witness. But as we rest and abide in that witnessing, in that witness, we recognize at a certain point that that too dissolves. And we, it's not a forced seeing. It falls away when we're ready to let go of holding back our experience, of letting the world in, of letting go, of letting go, of letting go. <laughs> when I talk about mm, the awakening of the gut, it's where that same recognition on some level penetrates into the internal experience. Because we can have this recognition and there can be a sense of I am beyond the mind and the body. And there can be a recognition that that awareness that's beyond the mind and the body, it's one with the world. It's one with nature. It's one with form. And we can see that and we can feel that. And yet there still can be a subtle way where we don't quite recognize that the internal experience or the personality or the psyche is also that too. The emotions, the thinking, the thoughts, the concepts, and of course the deep unconscious, the core beliefs, that too is part of that one consciousness. And especially when we talk about the core beliefs, oftentimes in the teachings, they're focused on getting us out of the mind and destroying concepts. And there's a utility to that. But what we recognize initially is that the core beliefs are actually an energetic structure that allows the interpersonal connectivity to exist. And so who and what we are as awareness begins to be seen to be non-separate from the personality and the human beingness. And then how that human beingness relates to another as a flow of energy and consciousness, that to itself is what we could say the flow of the recognition of unity through the human being looks and feels like. I often call that mm, awakened relationship. It's the place where that space, that consciousness, recognizing that it is the one, connects with another being that recognizes they are the one. And there's not two. So there's a relationship, but it's a relationship of oneness. And so it isn't a person having a, a relationship with another person. It's the one consciousness seeing itself. But even in that recognition of non-separation, there is a flow of energy. There is a flow of consciousness. And part of that recognition that we experience internally and in relationship is a sense of flow of love. Love that can seek to find union with another but underneath that there's a love that's just the flow of truth and it's the recognition of oneness and non-separation itself
And so we can recognize those pure insights and realizations. And then there can be a place where the question arises, what's the point? <laughs> Is there a reason to wake up? Is there a byproduct? Is there something that I can get from that? And on some level we can say no, <laughs> but on some level we can say yes. And what we get is a sense of liberation and freedom. And I like to point towards this place of moment-to-moment -moment liberation as opposed to a big boom experience where we can have this concept that our awakening or enlightenment can just blast all of our conditioning out in one shot. <laughs> and the reality is for most people, the process is something al along the lines of I got it, I lost it. I got it, I lost it. There can be times when the recognition is clear, oftentimes when we're alone, in meditation. But it's usually in relationship, in life, in work. That's where the conditioning tends to start up again, and we lose it. Part of the deepening is bringing that recognition into our life situation and relationships. But internally, the experience, the deeper we go, what that recognition and realization allows us to do is to inquire into our experience in more dynamic situations. And so another way to approach the embodiment conversation is how can we be with our experience in a way that allows us to be free and liberated? Initially, we can have this experience and this recognition and this realization of opening into awareness. And there tends to be a sense of presence and energy and bliss that can come with that. Or not, depending on how our system is hardwired. But more importantly than that, the liberation that I point towards is this sense of finding a way to be free in our experience without it having to be blissful. And part of that is learning to open to emotions, learning to be with our experience in a way that allows us not to get pulled in and caught. When we experience openness and freedom and bliss and even a sense of love and unconditional just openness, there can be this subtle orientation and grasping of that. And as beautiful as that is, the limitation will be the moment the conditioning is triggered or the moment our experience is in what we want, we'll push it away. And that's how subtle this thing gets. The moment something in us pushes away, we're going to lose it. <laughs> or the moment that part of us says, I want the bliss, instead of this experience that's showing up, that very dynamic itself is what's going to put us back to sleep. And so, as we awaken, as we disidentify from our experience, what we'll notice that we can do is we can inquire on the fly more and more. Initially, we may need to kickstart the process, so if we're totally asleep at the wheel, we can just stop. Okay, what's the first step? And I like to say the first step is rest as awareness. The true meditation, which isn't a concentration on a mantra or a focusing of the mind. It's an opening into awareness, opening into the witness. recognizing that, oh, 
my experience is thought, emotion, sensations, but what's aware of that? Can I notice the witnessing, the witness? And can I recognize that that witness is ultimately what I am? So that's the first step. And from there, we can enter into the contractions and into the body and into the emotions from a much freer space. Once we've found that awareness and we're able to shift our identity and our consciousness out of the mind and the emotions, we now have this freedom to re-enter into the emotional experience in a mm, profound and transformative way. And so that dropping into the heart, the opening into emotions, is an invitation for that space or that field of awareness to re-enter into the mind-body. And as we do this, it's a much more gritty mm, path. <laughs> Waking up and out as difficult as it may seem at a certain point. Transcending our experience ultimately is easier than just being with our experience. Especially when the emotional content is negative and contracted but as we enter into the emotional experience, the point isn't just to feel for the sake of feeling. The point is to let go more and more, to surrender more and more. And as we let go and surrender, the emotions that, and contractions that are spontaneously, spontaneously there and we could say hidden in the deep unconscious, they arise to the surface. And so we can see through with clarity, but we also can soften into the emotional experience, allow the petals of the heart to open, allow the negativity to arise, allow the contractions to mm, gently unwind. And as the intensity of that experience unwinds deeper with more powerful energies and identities and core beliefs. We can learn to tune directly into the sensations of emotions, into the sensations of mm, core contractions, core beliefs. And when I speak about core beliefs, core beliefs are always structured around some degree of lack or unworthiness. And there's always a sense of I amness connected with it. So if you can feel into that sense of I am unworthy, I'm not good enough. And if you can feel into that mm, subtle contraction around that, that's good. There's of course all the negative emotions that come with that, but underneath all of that is just the core clamping. We can often feel that in the gut, in the belly. It's a non-conceptual no. And of course, when <clears throat> we feel that, no, there's a spontaneous energy and movement towards transcending it. Mm, maybe holistically as the field of consciousness, but maybe unconsciously as a sense of dissociation, checking out. And we can only do what we can do. But in the deepening, part of the invitation that comes with the dissolution of identity and the opening of the belly and the gut which is moving towards the realization of no self and the absolute which is beyond consciousness and beyond I amness and beyond identity completely part of that dissolving into the deep emptiness 
that comes at that level of the realization is a realization that that aspect of the journey isn't about these big boom or powerful experiences or even subtle experiences. It's just simply about the unwinding and the dissolving of identity itself. And in that dissolving of identity itself, what the call is, is surrender, softening, deepening, opening, letting go, letting be, letting arise, letting it pass through emotions, energies. It's just energy. Recognizing that all experience is just energy. And allowing that movement to tenderize our beingness and our resistances to the place where we can just allow, allow, allow. And that energy arising and passing through can do so with less and less resistance. <laughs> and for that really to unfold in a very deep way, what simultaneously has to erode in the dissolving of identity is the dissolving of the personal will. And the unwinding and the dis dissolving of the personal will is not just our identity and our identification. What it is, is actually the repression barrier on our psychology, which is one with that quality of our beingness that says, I want and I don't want, that says yes to experience or no. Reality as such doesn't compute no. <laughs> <laughs> but who and what we are, which is reality, which is nature, is always non-conceptually and silently saying yes. It's simpler than that. The simplest cognition of what reality hmm, says when it contacts anything is there it is. It's here. And so if we circle back to the embodiment conversation and look at that entire awakening process and the level of practice, we can also recognize that the awakened mind or the fruit of self-inquiry, which is to recognize that who and what we are is space, is awareness. That's the practice. That's the true meditation. Resting as awareness, resting as presence. And when that awareness penetrates into the heart, into the body, recognizing unity and as it flows through the heart, it sees and feels oneness. And when awareness sees and feels oneness, there's always going to be a sense of love and connection, oneness, an intuitive regard for itself. Initially, that recognition tends to be only seen when the emotions are light and easy. But eventually, as it deepens, there's a sense of, and this too, and this too. Even emotions like fear and anger and self-hatred, sadness, grief, contraction, resentment, these are all invitations to recognize that that, too, is the consciousness that I am. So there's the ability to rest as the witness of that, of the container of that, the unbounded aspect of space and awareness that holds our experience 
there's an ability for that to penetrate into, into the heart and allow the emotions to flow and flux. And recognize their sameness with that witnessing. But there's also a recognition that there is a release of all of that. There is a letting go. This is where this is all going towards. It's a letting go. It's a release. If you can just tune into the metaphor of a, a fireworks exploding. And then it dazzles and it dissolves into the darkness, into the space. This is what our conditioning, this is what our identity is attempting to do. Explode into stillness. Explode into emptiness. 